Okay, we're welcome to the live recording of Homegirls episode three. Yes. It's a really fascinating topic, and uh, we're going to get started as usual with our introduction, so you might not be able to hear it, but you will hear it when you listen to the recording. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And hopefully for ECC's mom, we both look presentable today. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So, all right, here goes our introduction. So I really like that because it shows the difficulty of disgusting pesticides. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, are they good or are they bad? Yeah, it's hard to tell. It's really hard to tell. tell. So my question for you is, did you know who Rachel Carson was before you did the research for this? No. No. Um, I knew her. I knew what Silent Spring was, but I I I don't really know anything more about what the book. Did you ever did you hear Silent Spring? Have you ever heard of that book either? Mm, No. I don't know what they're teaching in the Texas public school (laughs) system, but clearly we never read that one. um, We will talk more about Silent Spring, but just quick definition for those of you who don't know. uh, It was a book released in the 60s about how pesticides were harming us. And it was the first big research. Uh, it is a nonfiction title that went out for widespread. It's not an, not an academic work or anything. Um, but it was like the first big wake up call kind of investigative journalism type thing on pesticides. Ooh, okay, okay, okay. And it made people really aware of all the harm we were doing to the environment and to ourselves. Yeah, for sure. But on the flip side. Oh, first of all, did you see Al Gore, like really young Al Gore? He made a cameo in that. No, I didn't notice. Yeah. Watch it when, when you go back and watch it again. <laughs> There's a really young Al Gore. He's like praising Rachel Carson. Oh, my God. Super young Al Gore. And then you have someone who's like, uh, we got rid of DDT and malaria came back. That That is not Al Gore. But yeah. that, that's someone else. But that kind of shows you like what Rachel Carson did. Was it good or was it bad? Yeah. You no, know, it's not black and white. Yeah. And on that confusing note, <laughs> hi, I'm Mary. And I'm Isis. And we're the homegirls. And today we're talking about pesticides. Yes. As you probably already figure out, the history of pesticides and our health is very controversial. I'm sure it is. Yes. Super duper. Um, Even as we're sitting here. Oh, by the way, I want to remind everyone, our podcast was delayed because we got hit by another natural disaster. Yeah, we did. Yeah. I wanted to bring that up. (laughs) Um, Quick digression. We lost an entire week of work. Yep. Because we lost power and we lost water and Ted Cruz left his dog home alone to die. Yep, and he went to Cancun. He went to Cancun. <laughs> <laughs> that was insane. That Literally, was insane. Like, and I feel like we weren't warned enough about this because they did not make it like I thought they were going to do rolling power outages. Like we wouldn't have power for not that long. We were like on 30 plus hours without we, power. In this house or where we're currently sitting to record this, we had four full days without power. Yeah. I it mean, was really bad. It was really bad. Um, anyway, that was a digression, but that's why the podcast has been delayed because we yeah, had yeah. another natural disaster. We had to, we had to get through that first. Yeah. yeah. Now we're back. We're now here. we're back. So everything's fine now. <laughs> anyway, anyway, back to pesticides. As long as there have been humans, there have been humans trying to get rid of pest. You could say that pest extermination is really the oldest profession. Do you know what they always say the oldest profession is? What do they, what do they say? Prostitution. Oh. But I would argue that pesticide or pest control is really the oldest profession. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that makes sense. Honestly, bugs have been around forever. So. Maybe maybe they go hand in hand. Maybe prostitution and pest control. <laughs> they're, they they kind of overlap in their history, maybe. Um, pesticides are both a blessing as a curse and a curse. As much as pesticides have allowed us to eat a wide variety of things, it is also called a wide variety of health and safety issues. You could say like carbon monoxide and radon that pesticides are a silent killer. They're everywhere. It's in the air we breathe, the food we eat, the water we drink. They're also 
involved in everything, including the process of grow, grow, I can't talk today. No worries. Growing fibers to make our clothes. Oh. Yeah. I didn't know that. Anything that's agricultural related is going to have pesticides. So that includes our lawn and our gardens, our fruits and vegetables, and even meat, you know, because you're dealing with animals. Yeah. And the cows have to be immunized against flea and ticks and stuff. Even our pets, you you know, our pets take pesticides. They ingest pesticides so they don't get fleas and ticks. Yeah. That's insane. I know. I never thought about it like that. Yeah. And it goes so far is to our relative safety in the summer because especially if you live in the south like us mosquitoes are a huge issue and they spread some pretty deadly diseases so if it wasn't for pesticide we'd all be dead of yellow fever essentially yeah. so um i i only say this to make the real point that it's literally in everything we do in our whole life is because of pesticides yeah so you could say that the entirety of our first world comfortable existence is due to pesticides Right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. But how did we get here? That's the big question. I'm sure there was a lot of uh, trial and error. <laughs> Let's start at the beginning. But first, I want to talk to you about the major class of pesticides. This might okay. be something, uh, you know, some words you hear thrown out. I just want to define so everybody knows what we're talking about. Um, their first type, we're going in alphabetical order here, is, and I'm going to say this wrong, a caricide. I was going to say that. I was going to say it. A lot of things are about to be mispronounced yeah. tonight because I was trying to read some of the stuff and I was like, I have no idea how to say this. We're going to wing it. We got it. Similar. <laughs> if you go back and listen to our WDI episode, yeah, yeah. there's a lot of mispronunciations there. <laughs> Lots of mispronunciations here as well. So uh, a caricide, I think is how you pronounce it, is mites, ticks, and spider pesticide. Oh. That's because a arachnid is a spider. Yeah. So yeah, the yeah. root word of that is arach. So maybe it's pronounced arachicide. I don't know. Anyway, antimicrobial is pesticides for bacteria, viruses, and other microbes. Okay, I've heard that word. Yep. Big right now because of the COVID. Yeah, for sure. Ex- unless you're Greg Abbott. I'm sorry, we're getting too political here. But <laughs> it, it, Texas is headed for another disaster, people. I know, <laughs> yep. I'm scared. <laughs> Attractant, which attracts pests uh, for monitoring or killing. Avicide, which is bird pesticide. For, oh. Yeah, for pest birds, I guess. Fungicide, which is fungi. Sorry. <laughs> Finn, I don't know what he's doing. We have Finn with us today, and he yeah, is trying to crawl up on the table. <laughs> his, his little, like, keys are, like, jingling. Jingling, like, yeah. No, just, <laughs> his bling. <laughs> fungicide, you know what fungicide is. Yes. That gets rid of fungus. Herbicide, you know what that is. Um, I think. Weeds. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> Insecticide. Yes. General insects. What about mollusicide? No, I don't think I've heard of that. That's pesticide for snails and slugs. Interesting. Yep. <laughs> nematicide. Can you Google this? What's a nematode? A nematicide is a pesticide for nematodes. They're roundworms. Ew. Oh, no. Yeah. I'm sorry we Googled that. <laughs> um, this one's kind of a funny word. Pisicicide. Pisicicide? <laughs> Which is fish. Oh, oh. <laughs> interesting. Because uh, a Latin root word for fish is like pis- pista. Oh. So they're using the Latin root word for fish for pisticide. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like pee or something. Yeah. <laughs> Predaticide, which is for vertebrate predators. Repellent, which repels pest. Okay. Rodent side. That's an easy one. Rodents. And synergist. I don't know that. Which is a pesticide that per- improves the performance of other pesticides. I know. Now, that's weird. This is like, um, what is that Leonardo DiCaprio movie where they're like in dreams? Oh, uh, Inception. And yeah, this is pesticide Inception. <laughs> the synergist is yeah. a pesticide type Inception. Hey, Finn really wants to be up yeah, here right he really now. Does. Um. Hold on, let me grab him. Jesus. Calm down, boy. I know. Ben's having a heart attack here. All right, I'm going to hold his collar. So, pesticide actually goes back 10,000 years. Really? I know. That's a really long time. I know. Um, we know that the first documented use of pesticides is with the Sumerians. They're the ones that made like the writing that was like in cuneiform wedge shape their writing okay. was like triangles and dots or something oh okay okay um they used sulfur 
to control insects and mites. Sulfur? Yes. Uh, 30, th- excuse me, 30, 3,200 years ago, we have evidence that the Chinese were using insecticides they made from plants. <laughs> Swear to God, I'm just about to throw this dog out the window. <laughs> video what are you doing if you're watching the video you can see this the the dog keeps trying to climb up on the all right i think finn's getting kicked out yeah i think we're gonna have to kick him out yeah all right (laughs) sorry baby taking a brief intermission brief intermission the dog gets kicked out of the room (laughs) he's too excited i know okay put the the water yeah still here we're still here (laughs) (laughs) i gotta go over the obstacle course i know there's literally like so many wires that you could trip over in here right now (laughs) it's scary oh my god i'm stuck on east oh oh no careful with the raccoon (laughs) we don't want to lose him okay back (laughs) back to our regular scheduled programming with no little dogs losing their mind okay we're good we're good now where was I? I was at the Chinese. 3,200 years ago, the Chinese were using insecticides made from plants. And 2,500 years ago, we have the Greeks and Romans who are coming up with fumigants and mosquito nets. So mm. um, at 2,500 years ago, they're actually already pretty advanced as yeah. far as um, pesticides and insecticides. Very similar to what we're using now. We still use fumigants. Yeah. Um, and we still use mosquito nets. Yeah, we do. Uh, they were also, the Greeks and Romans were also using those sticky tape things, oh, yeah, like yeah, the yeah. flies that get that, stuck that, on. Yeah, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking um, about. They also had pesticide sprays. Wow, that's crazy. So they were already doing these things. I think if you listen to a lot of our episodes, you'll, we talk a lot about the Greeks and Romans being really super advanced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and they were very, really quite advanced on uh, pesticides and insecticides, but not to be outdone by the Chinese, who by uh, BCE 300, so that's, uh, I said BCE, I should say Common Era 300. So that's the year 300 in the Common Era. So like, how many, uh, you know, yeah. we're in 2021 right now. So. Yeah, yeah. They were in 300. They were using um, ants um, to control caterpillars and beetles. I think we talked about this in our insect yeah i think we might have i think we did i think we talked about this in our wdi episode as well so after the roman empire falls we know what happens right everything just goes to hell in a handbasket yeah and literally they forget how to do everything. yeah 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 i remember this we've yeah. talked about, we this, talked a about this a lot too yeah <laughs> um well that happens again unfortunately of and course. yep up until the 17th century people believed that the bugs and the insects and the pest were because of the devil. Okay. Yeah. If you had bugs and <laughs> pest, it's because you were not praying to God enough. So Then I guess all of us aren't. <laughs> yeah. So that, uh, that happened. That's crazy. Yes. So the 17th century is the 1600s. It's in the 1600s that they start thinking, you know what? Maybe it's not all the devil. Maybe we need to like start experimenting again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so... They, they still don't know what the Greeks and Romans did in the 1600s because they lost everything. Yeah, yeah. So basically, pesticide has to get reinvented. Of course. Yeah. This happens a lot. I know. <laughs> With a lot of things. It was concrete. It really makes me wonder like how far we could be if all this stuff didn't just get lost in time. And wars and yeah. famines and fires and everything. I know. It's really sad, actually. Yeah, it is really sad because it's like maybe we could be like further with technology if it weren't for that we could be in like living in space right now exactly like (laughs) but i wouldn't have to drive my car that'd be nice so from uh 1750 to 1880 we've jumped ahead in time here we were in the 1600s now we're in the 1700s uh this is called an agricultural revolution from 1750 to 1880 in europe and because of this agricultural revolution they're turning more and more of what used to just be green space into farms yeah And particularly in Ireland, England, and Belgium, they're relying on the potato. Do you know what happened to the potato in the 1840s? I feel like I've heard something to do with this, but I can't remember. It's very dark and very sad. The potato was like, all right, I'm going to head out and rotted. There was a a fungus. We talked about this in the mold episode. Yeah, 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 yeah. There was a fungus that rotted the potatoes, especially in Ireland in 1840. Yeah, I remember. I remember. And millions of people died. Yeah. 
There was um, a mildew outbreak in grape growing areas of Europe. So that would be France, Italy, and Switzerland in the 1850s that ruined the wine industry. There was an outbreak of fungal leaf spots and coffee, um, which is why Ceylon, India switched from coffee to tea, which is why we have Ceylon tea now. Wow. Yeah. And there was an invasion from the Americas because we have all the trade going on from the, the Americas to Europe mm-hmm. of what we call the grape Again, I'm going to say this wrong. Polyxera, which uh, was also was an invasive grape that almost destroyed the French wine industry. That's yeah. insane. That's scary. I know. So from 1750 to 1880, you have these just one after another type of, you know, insect, fungus, pesticide, yeah. no pesticide, I should say, related disasters. Yeah. And that really woke people up to like, all right, it's definitely not the devil anymore. We really yeah. need to do something about this. So they go back to very rudimentary, you know, trial and error type things. And it's actually not until the Second World War that we remaster pesticides. That is a long time. I know. So from 1880, when the last of these big, like, invasive species biological disasters happened to the Second World War, which is a very long time. Yeah, that that's is an, a really almost long an entire time. lifetime. Mm-hmm. Um, at this point, we're in fighting the Second World War all over the world for, I mean, it is called a world war after all. I felt like that, that might be obvious. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and there's a need to protect the soldiers in the tropics. So if you don't know what's happening in the tropics, if you live in the South, you have a pretty good idea of what's happening in the tropics. But if you live up North, essentially it's all mosquitoes and the mosquitoes cause yellow fever. Um, I think they called they cause dengue, but maybe is dengue caused by a mosquito? I think it was. I call, they cause malaria as well. They cause uh, West Nile virus, all sorts of horrible types of things. So yes, yeah. dengue is caused by a mosquito, which I believe we did talk about this before as well. I don't remember the. There's a lot of overlap. Thing. Yeah, we've talked like it's crazy how things have come together because literally we'll talk about things and we'll be like, hey, we talked about something like this in that episode. Yep, but yeah. So basically, you'd send all these white people to colonize areas, and then they'd all drop dead from mosquito-borne illnesses. Yeah, yeah. Well, now we're in like the ultimate white person war, the Second World War, <laughs> right? Yeah. Those white people just getting us in trouble, and they're sending all these white soldiers to the tropics in Afri- Africa again, and they're getting sick, and you can't fight a war if your guys are getting sick. Yeah. So what they come up with in the United States is a word that is so long. Look how long this word is. It is really it's long. It's a really long I word. I would never be able to I'm going to try to say it, and then I'm going to tell you what the abbreviation is, and, yeah. and you'll know what it is. Um, It's called dick, 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 laurel, <laughs> dipenyl, tricholorothelene, or DDT. You've DDT. heard of DDT. Yeah, I actually have some stuff about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, it's actually comes from the United States, but it's manufactured in uh, Switzerland. Okay. And uh, this, so this is what the Allies are doing. Germany, actually, the Nazis, they uh, introduced their own type of pesticides to protect their troops. Um, they call them organophosphates is mm-hmm. what the Nazis produced. Um, so initially, during the Second World War, the idea is we're just going to get mosquitoes. But after the Second World War, it's like, hey, this DDT works on a lot of things not yeah. just mosquitoes so the united states and the rest of the world realizes they can use ddt for almost all agricultural um things basically yeah yeah um ddt is very cheap it's also very effective in small quant- quantities it's very easy to apply but it's also bad for you very very bad for you not surprised yeah <laughs> it took a second to find that out that when DDT was first invented, it was called a miracle insecticide because it just wow. basically killed everything. It, it's They thought it solved our problems. Yep. <laughs> they thought so. So from 1946 onward, so the war is over. We're using DDT on everything now. Yep. Um, it What histori- insect historians, this is crazy to say <laughs> insect historians, they, caused, they call the period from 1946 onward the age of pesticides. It's divided into three phases, the era of optimism, which is 1946 to 1962, the era of doubt, which is 1962 to 1976, 
and the era of integrated pest management, IPM, from 1976 into the present day. Isn't that intense? <laughs> that is very intense. I know. So let's start with the era of optimism, which is 1946 to 1952. That's when we're using DDT and every single poison we can get our hands on mm -hmm. to manufacture crops, to kill mosquitoes. And we're just rolling in it and living life and acting like everything's fine babies born with three heads is totally normal yeah right <laughs> well it is rachel carson when she publishes her book in 1963 that really brings this hey the government is killing you to the forefront so this is it, the era of, of era, doubt. era of doubt 1962 <laughs> to 1976 which corresponds with uh the hippie movement for an obvious reason yeah you know there's a big backlash we need to go back to natural living mm -hmm. um because we're being murdered by these pesticides yeah so uh, then we have the era of integrated pest management, which is uh, after 1976. And also the 1970s are big because you get a, little, a lot of environmental regulations at that yeah. point. We stopped dumping chemicals into our water, uh, stuff like that. Although we, if you live in Texas, we still, we still dump chemicals yeah. into the water. But <laughs> anyway, uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> going onward. So Rachel Carson's book released and... Um, 63. Oh, I'm actually, look at this. I have in my notes. It was released in 62. Oh, okay. I've okay. been saying the wrong date all along. Um, it really was the big backlash against DDT. And that's why you will see when you buy mosquito spray now, it'll say no DDT on yeah, it. Yeah. Even the stuff we use on our bodies says no DDT. Um, and a lot of times if you go to other countries, they'll have notices up saying you can't even bring DDT into the country. Uh, and Puerto Rico has a big thing against DDT because oh. it um targets that you know they have those like mangrove swamps that you can like kayak through mm -hmm. and they're full of mosquitoes oh yeah and you get like eaten alive mm -hmm. i mean there's a whole rainforest over there so i'm sure like makes sense yes so um they ban ddt because it kills all like basically everything yeah so it just doesn't kill the mosquitoes it kills the frogs and all the other little organisms that make up um that ecosystem ecosystem yeah um have you ever done that the kayaking to the bioluminescent mm -mm, bay i haven't i haven't next time you go to puerto rico you I have need to do to. that i should i'm from there what the heck <laughs> but put on bug spray though you will be oh, you yeah. will be covered like wearing a vest of mosquitoes it's oh my it's, God. it's frightening yeah That's it's frightening scary. it's really fun but it's also like you'll never want to do it again <laughs> okay so it's a one-time thing yes so the other thing ddd ddd D D D D D D T did was it led to the rise of insecticide resistance. Poop. That's really bad. Yeah. So basically, the bugs got smart, and while DDT kills everything, it also created bugs that evolved to be resistant to DDT. Oh my God! Super yeah. Bugs. Super S bugs. So in 1947. I mean, we released DDT in the Second World War. It's by 1947. That's just two years after the war ends. Yeah. That the Swiss find a housefly that is resistant to DDT. I mean, that's how fast it happened. That's insane. I know. It's crazy how fast animals evolve to like make sure they survive. Yeah. Like and actually, it's funny because when I lived in Washington, D.C., we would give our dog Luke Frontline to prevent fleas and ticks. And then when I moved to South Texas, I was still giving him Frontline and he got a horrible outbreak of fleas horrible oh, okay, okay. and i took him to the vet and i was like i don't understand how this happened he was frontlined and apparently south texas fleas are immune to frontline that's insane yes so whatever t uh, fleas we have up in dc are a different breed type, like yeah. type of fleas than what we have here in south texas that's that's crazy i know so now obviously the dogs take a much more expensive ingest a pest control yeah. or type of pesticide it's not cheap and they're not cheap no i think that's like crazy that we feed our animals pesticides i know whatever i digressed again <laughs> let's talk about integrated pest management so this is the third phase of mm -hmm. the age of pesticides um integrated pest management is the most modern form of pest management it's what we're doing now essentially um it is done by doing crop rotation uh, they encourage beneficial predators or parasites that attack pests. So people used to kill bats, right? Because we used mm -hmm. to be afraid of rabies. Now it's like, no, bring the bats back. They eat pests. Um, also snakes eat pests. So a lot of animals that we're actually kind of afraid of, um, they work well 
in integrated pest management. And it's interesting when you realize that these animals were being murdered en masse because we were afraid of them, the pest level rose. And now when we realize what we did, we have reintroduced those animals and the, the pest levels have gone yeah. back down. That's crazy. Oh, humans. <laughs> they also do, yeah, they also do very specific type of pesticide application that coincide with the most susceptible period of the pest life cycle. So they target them when they're eggs instead of waiting wow. for them to hatch. You know, it's all about using as little actual pesticide as, as possible. possible. Yeah. The thing to know though, IPM integrated pest management assumes that a certain level of pests are tolerable so unlike ddt when it was just like kill everything now it's like you know what we're going to allow five to ten percent yeah or whatever they're allowing and um we're just gonna have to live with it yeah so your crop yield you know you're gonna lose so many crops to pest right eradication is not the goal essentially, mm -hmm. because elimination of the pest may also result in the loss of the beneficial predators, right? Yep. If you kill their food, you kill them. Yeah. So, however, even in the modern day, sometimes we still have to bomb houses, right? Especially yeah. when it comes to termites. For sure. Um, and fleas and bed bugs. Yeah. So there is some very chemical, heavy chemical pesticides still in use today. Yeah. But I feel like that's for just like severe emergency instances. situations. Yeah. Yes. I think the biggest issue with DDT is that we were using it because we used it for everything. We were ruining our agricultural process. Yeah. So where IPM is so important is it's it's basically going back to a more natural form of um, agricultural yeah. living. I don't know. I want to make one more note here before I hand it over to you. What about organic pesticides? They don't work. <laughs> I was about to say, I feel like, <laughs> you know, organic is good for food. But yeah. For a pesticide, I don't know about that. Sometimes you just need the big guns. Yeah. And it's like, it's a clearly like not effective. <laughs> yeah. You know, I've tried natural organic mosquito spray and it's like, I just stink. Yeah. Is that what's keeping the mosquitoes away? The stench? <laughs> oh, no. I don't know. So organic pesticides are a thing. It's just take it with a grain of salt. Sometimes you need, you need the yeah, good Yeah, it's just not even close to as effective as... DDT. Yeah. <laughs> so um, speaking of DDT, I think you have something to tell us. Yes. So... Right, I'm passing it on to you. Yes. So I'll be talking about pesticides a little bit more and talking about how they actually affect... The human body. Ooh. So, let me mute that really quick. Okay. I'll cut this out. Oh, taking a break real quick. Okay, so yeah, I'll be talking about pesticides a little bit more and how they actually affect the human body, which is actually pretty interesting. And it's actually insane. <laughs> um, I was really surprised by a lot of the stuff I read. So what is a pesticide? So when we think of a pesticide, we normally think of it as like something we just buy at the store to kill our weeds or fungus or whatever. But sadly, there's much more to it than that. Um, the product that you buy or are exposed to is actually a pesticide, uh, pesticide, <laughs> a pesticide formulation that contains a number of different materials, including active and inert ingredients, as well as contaminants and impurities. In addition, pesticides, when subject to various environmental conditions, break down to other materials known as metabolites, which are sometimes more toxic uh, than the parent material. Hmm. So when it breaks down... It can become even more. Yeah, that's even sounds, worse. That sounds like some foreshadowing. <laughs> I know. So uh, the active ingredient, usually the only component of the formulation uh, listed on the pesticide label, is by nature biologically and chemically active against a target pest, whether it's an insect, a weed, or a fungus. Um, by definition, these chemicals kill living things yep just like that list we, we ran yeah down. yeah exactly so um pesticides have these things called contaminants and impurities and contam contaminants and impurities are often a part of the pesticide product and responsible responsible for product hazards dioxin and ddt have been identified as contaminants which have not been purposely uh purposefully added but are a function of the production process Metabolites are breakdown products that form when a pesticide is used in the environment and mixes with air, water, soil, or living organisms. Often the metabolite is more hazardous than the parent pesticide. 
And um, pesticide manufacturers are only required to list the active ingredients in a pesticide, leaving consumers and applicators unaware of the possible toxics present in the inert ingredients of pesticide products they are using. No way. Yeah, like so, even today? I think so, yeah. That's insane. So they only have to list the active ingredients. And clearly, like, the active ingredients can change into yeah. something bad. Yeah. So they don't technically have to put that on the products. Are you going to talk about Angel Orange? No, 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 not really. You're I not going to talk no, much I, about Agent Orange? No, no, no. Okay. Uh, I'll let you finish this and then we'll talk about it. Yeah, yeah, we can talk. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You, I'm sure you know way, way more about it than I do. But yeah. <laughs> so unless uh, the EPA administrator determines that the chemical poses a public health threat, that's the, that's the only way that they'll put it on the... Is it the EPA? Yeah, if, if they determine that it will actually cause it. Yeah. So that's really why it t- took so long for DDT to come out as yeah. being something bad. A lot of people had to die same with agent orange yeah exactly so pesticide manufacturers argue they cannot release information on inner ingredients because they are trade secrets and if released their products could be duplicated this is pesticides not coke this isn't kfc I know, that's so selfish it's i like, know you don't want to listen because you don't want somebody else to remake this and make money off of it that's ridiculous <laughs> The only two companies are allowed to do this is KFC and Exactly, Coke. exactly. So quite often, inner ingredients constitute over 95% of the pesticide product. Inner ingredients are mixed into pesticide products as a carrier or sticking agent and are often as toxic as the active ingredient. Oh my God, this is dark. It is really dark. It's so, like, and we don't even know, like they're not even telling us <laughs> so that makes a lot of sense when i teach the wdi class why people freak out so much about the pesticides yeah um so let's talk about asian orange real quick yeah yeah let's do it during the vietnam war one of the ways we cleared the Viet Cong out of the rainforest was using agent orange and yes. if you don't know anything about the vietnam war it was kind of a guerrilla war on the side of the vietnamese um whereas the united states was fighting more of a war war the vietnamese were more guerrilla fighters yeah and so we were sending our soldiers out into this dense jungle where they were often you know picked off one by one or uh, horrible booby traps all sorts yeah. of really terrible things things happen so they decided they would just burn the jungle down and one of the ways they did that was using a um what would you call agent orange can you look up what they specifically call i think it was a herbicide i think so um yeah an herbicide is is an herbicide and defoliant. and defoliant um so essentially they dumped it using airplanes out into the jungle and that is how they kind of just got rid of the jungle what they didn't realize, what the government probably did realize, yeah, but what they yeah. didn't tell the soldiers was that when you inhale Agent Orange, it causes all sorts of terrible, horrible health problems. Yeah. And so it's a lot of reasons why now you have guys with what we would call Vietnam War syndrome, mm-hmm. a lot of homeless Vietnam vets, a combination of PTSD and Agent Orange um, poisoning essentially yeah. uh so it's a really sad story the government never compensated yeah, anyone because i'm pretty sure that didn't only affect like the people on the other side but it also affect like our side as well yes well i mean that's we don't even know what it did to the vietnamese yeah exactly. we only kind of know through rumors and conspiracy theories really what it did to the american soldiers yeah because even to this day the government har- barely acknowledges that agent orange was a toxin yeah um and i don't believe that many people if any have been reimbursed for that's being, insane yeah poisoned so that's really sad that is really sad um and i meant to talk about that in my history section and then didn't even write a blurb on it because i was so interested in this yeah we literally talked about it like right before we started the the podcast yeah and i completely didn't add a section on it yeah yeah, no it's actually really crazy and really sad that we have to go to these extents because of war but well i wraps up into your like the epa doesn't have to tell us yeah how bad these things actually Mm -hmm. are Mm -hmm. unless it's a public health threat yes and i guess because we weren't you know defoliating our own jungles it doesn't matter if we kill the vietnamese apparently yeah, but it, it's horrible it's, it's pretty really terrible horrible. yeah so all right sorry go on so now we'll talk a little bit 
a little bit. I also can't speak today. I keep messing <laughs> everything up. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about pesticides and human health. Oh, so that was a good segue then. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was. So pesticides can cause short term adverse health effects called acute effects as well as chronic. But they're not cute at all. Yeah, they're not cute. Yeah, they're not, <laughs> they're not cute at all. They're the opposite of cute. And they can also cause chronic adverse effects, which can occur months or years after exposure. Yeah. So example examples of acute health effects include stinging eyes, rashes, blisters, blindness, nausea, dizziness, diarrhea, and death. It's very That's bad. an acute. Apparently, death is an acute. Apparently, it's an acute <laughs> health effect. Is, is this like one of those pharmaceutical commercials where they like list all the symptoms like, at the end? It's like, you might vomit and die. die. <laughs> it's, it, that's exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> So an example of known chronic effects are cancers, birth defects, which is, I actually know a lot about birth defects, reproductive harm, neu- neurological and develop, de- <laughs> neurological and devel- developmental, why can I read that? Yeah, neurological and developmental toxicity, immunotoxicity and disruption of the is it endocrine, en- system. endocrine system. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's your thyroid. Yeah. 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 And some people are more vulnerable than others to pesticide impacts. For example, infants and young children are known to be more susceptible than adults to the toxic effects of pesticides. I feel like that's with everything. Yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, kids, they're still growing. Yeah. They're they're much more vulnerable than we are. We talked about that in mold. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll talk about um, the acute, which are the immediate health effects. That are not cute. Yeah, the they're not, not cute. cute they're not effects. cute. The not cute immediate health effects. So immediate health effects from pesticide exposure includes irritation of the nose, throat, and skin, causing burning, stinging, and itching, as well as rashes and blisters. Nausea, dizziness, and diarrhea are also common. Um, people with asthma may have very severe reactions to some pesticides, particularly, here we go, pyrethrin pythroid <laughs> these are these are like specific pesticides um organ phosphate organophosphate sorry and carbamate pesticides huh. yeah so people with asthma will get a much worse yeah. reaction than like if you didn't have asthma and in many cases system uh sorry in many cases symptoms of pesticide poisoning mimic sy- symptoms of colds or the flu oh just like carbon monoxide yeah, so it's like sometimes people might not even be able to tell that they're feeling this way because of a pesticide so since pesticide related illnesses appear similar or identical to other illnesses pesticide poisonings are often misdiagnosed and underreported Um, Immediate symptoms may not be severe enough to prompt an individual to seek medical attention or a doctor might not even think to ask about pesticide exposure. But still, seek medical attention if you think you may have been poisoned by pesticides. So yeah, a lot of people get misdiagnosed. So once again, we have, is it allergies? Is it the flu? Is it sinuses? Is it carbon monoxide? Is Is it it COVID? Or is it pesticide? Yeah. I feel like we've added to our list Yeah, but I feel like that's a common thing, especially like, even today, people often get misdiagnosed. Like, it's really sad. <laughs> well, it's true. You have to be really aggressive with mm-hmm. doctors You sometimes. have to really push them because they don't believe you. They or, don't believe you yeah. or, or you're not in the right age group yeah, or exactly. something like that. Yeah, exactly. Um, so now let's talk a little bit about the chronic long-term health effects. So chronic health effects include cancer and other tumors, brain and nervous system damage, birth defects, infertility, and other reproductive problems, and damage to the liver, kidneys, lungs, and other body organs. Chronic effects may not appear for weeks, months, or even years after exposure, making it difficult to link health impacts to pesticides. And that was where you get Agent Orange. Exactly. Yeah, that's why. Some people who were there probably got affected in this type of way and they don't even know it was because of that yeah and they they die of cancer or they went crazy or Mm -hmm. all sorts of things and And it's like so much time passes i feel like even you wouldn't even think like oh maybe it was because of that like yeah you know so pesticides have been uh, implicated in human studies of leukemia lymphoma and cancers of the brain breast prostate and testes and and ovaries too (laughs) which is crazy but uh reproductive reproductive harm 
let me say that again reproductive harm from pesticides includes birth defects stillbirth spontaneous abortion Damn. sterility and infertility jesus so it really affects like being able to have kids and stuff like that oh my god i know and i wouldn't i wouldn't have thought that it would affect at least in that type of way like the cancers and stuff okay that makes sense but as far as infertility i wouldn't think that i really wouldn't have thought that that's really crazy yeah so um how do you say this again endocrine endocrine Endocrine, yeah endocrine disruptors are chemicals that often at extremely low doses interfere with important bodily functions by mimicking or blocking hormones um the which are you know the chemical messengers that circulate in blood and regulate many body processes including metabolism brain development the sleep cycle and stress response some pesticide uh some pesticides act as uh, endo- endocrine endocrine endocrine, endocrine. yeah <laughs> some pesticides act as endocrine disruptors and have been uh, shown to cause serious harm to animals including cancer sterility and developmental problems similar impacts have i'm talking so weird today similar impacts have been associated with human exposure to these chemicals so it affects animals in the same yeah. way pretty much that's why they don't let you use ddt mm-hmm. um a lot of it really wasn't about the mosquitoes it was yeah, never it about, was the about the mosquitoes it was the about other animals everything was else yeah, yeah. cuz that just messes up the whole the whole ecosystem yeah. you know like who cares about the mosquitoes they yeah, suck yeah yeah but it's like the mosquitoes what are about feeding, the toads yeah the mosquitoes are feeding that animal and yeah um children are more vulnerable to pesticides exposure because their organs nervous systems and immune systems are still develop, make, uh, developing and their higher rates of cell division and lower body weight also increase children's susceptibility to pesticide exposure and risks damn yes this is dark yeah and then i also found this was which was pretty interesting uh, which are health effects of certain classes of pesticides so there are certain Ooh. classes that will do different things uh, than other pesticides and i will probably pronounce a lot of these wrong the fyi <laughs> so the first one is organophosphates and carbamates these pesticides are like nerve gas. They attack the brain and nervous system, interfering with nerve signal transmission. Symptoms include headaches, nausea, dizziness, vomiting, chest pain, diarrhea, muscle pain, and confusion. In severe poisoning uh, incidents, symptoms can include convulsions, difficulty breathing, involuntary what? urination, no. coma, and death. Jesus. Acute poisoning of the nervous system by these pesticides affects hundreds of thousands of people oh around the world God. each year. No. Yes. So did you look up what the like brand names of those are? No, I did not. I actually did okay. not. I'm, I'm curious so to see. Yeah. Like, wait a second. We need to figure out if this is in our house because the whole purpose of this is stuff that can kill you in your house here. I know, and I was surprised hundreds of thousands of people. Um, what are carbonate pesticides? Mm. Mm, it doesn't, yeah, no, it doesn't really say exactly. Uh, t- Google, like, brand name. Mm, brand. I can't type. What pro- okay, here we go. This is like a research article. Holy cow. Jesus. Yeah, it doesn't go, say like, let me see. Go, go back to the definition. Yeah. Did it just say it's a primary source of vegetable oil? I, I don't know. I'm really upset. <laughs> this is frightening. It is. It doesn't say. It's really hard to find it. Let me see. This is carbamate. Applications. It's very sciencey. Yeah, it's very sciencey. So, wow, car. Wow, carbamates are used in some pharmacology. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, it's not giving us like the brand name of yeah. these, but this is really frightening. It is really frightening. <laughs> I mean, I feel like it's rare for it to actually happen to you, but it's still good to know. It's still, yeah, it's still I mean, scary. It's really scary. Um, the next one <laughs> is fumigants, which is yeah, something we fumigants. have here in Houston because yeah. every year they dump the fumigants on the city from mm-hmm. the airplanes to get yep. rid of the mosquitoes. So fumigants like methyl bromide and metam sodium can severely injure any tissues they touch effects from even minor exposures 
uh, minor exposures can include burning and itching of the eyes and skin, respiratory tract irritation, as well as coughing and nosebleeds. Fumigants can severely injure the, l- the lungs. Yeah, every year when they're dumping the chemicals, they're like, it's safe, it's fine. And I'm always like, but I can see you dumping chemicals. Yeah, I'm like, I feel like that's not safe. <laughs> that's not I'm going to stay inside. <laughs> Like, that's scary. It's very scary. Like, I would not trust that. It's like, you're lit- You're not supposed to be doing that. That's not normal. Uh, the next one is organochlorines. Many banned pesticides, including DDT, or are organochlorines. Okay. So it's in the same category as DDT. Although several organochlorine pesticides are still used, are still in use in California, including lindane and parathion. Organochlorines are central nervous system stimulants that can cause tremors, hyperexcitability, and seizures. Although these pesticides are generally less acutely, which is immediately, toxic than organophosphates or carbamates, since they persist in the environment and tend to accumulate in tissue as they pass up the food chain. Jeez. Yeah, they are extremely hazardous. Organochlorine pesticide residues and breakdown products are found in human breast milk worldwide and also in soil and plant and animal tissue from the middle of the Pacific pacific ocean to the arctic circle this is why people became hippies this is terrifying this i'm gonna go live terrifying. in a commune bubble now i know that, I don't. that's actually really scary especially the thing about the breast milk what is happening i'm like terrified now the, you see the more you know the more you know this the is why i know. have high functioning anxiety you see and i can't leave my house same (laughs) same that's actually terrifying that's terrifying and we're at the last one so you guys god good i'm gonna need like a xanax (laughs) it's funny because you're calling it chronic we're gonna need some chronic after jesus so the last one is pyrethroids pyrethroids i think that's how you say it pyrethroids pyrethroids these organic compounds, similar to the nat- natural pyrethrins produced by chrysanthemum? Chrysanthemums. Those are flowers. Those are yeah. the flowers, yeah. Um, are promoted by their manufacturers as harmless to humans and are in increasingly wide use. In fact, pyrethroids are a synthetic copy of a natural poison. While pyrethroids are among the least toxic pesticides to human, they are an excitatory nerve poison, also known as carcinogen. They are also highly toxic to insects, fish, and birds, even in very small doses. While natural pyrethrum breaks down in as little as 12 hours, the synthetic forms have been engineered to be more stable and persist in the environment for weeks. I feel like that's I need to lay down. uh, I'm like scarred (laughs) by your section. That was extremely... I told incredibly you. upsetting. I literally told Mary, I was like, I have, I usually like when I get research, it's usually like two pages, a page and a half. But I was like, Mary, I have three pages today because it's actually so intense. This is, so this makes my section, my next section look stupid because I was just about to talk about pesticides in the modern home. <laughs> as I always, my section's about the modern home, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And it was going to be like, Oh, you don't need to worry about it that much. But okay, apparently the EPA says they can just straight up lie to you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we can just be hopeful. I mean, things have gotten better. <laughs> just be hopeful. Things have gotten better since, you know, nine, the 1960s, at least. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. Well, first, on our section about yeah, pesticides. That was, that was my very brutal I just, uh, section. I like, I am totally scarred for life now. <laughs> Okay, so speaking of the EPA, I wanted to read to you this thing that they released for consumers. So that's us, people Mm -hmm. that live in homes, called the do's and don'ts of pest control. And they questioned, how can you solve your pest problem safely? The key is to be willing to ask questions, learn about the pest you have, and the options that are available to control a specific pest is the first step. So this is a little brochure. I want to read Mm -hmm. it to you. Of course, we know we can't trust the EPA, apparently. So take it with a grain of salt, I guess. True. True. Try, so this is the first section, try pest prevention first. Remove sources of food, water, and shelter. Store food in sealed plastic or gas containers. Fix leaky plumbing and don't let water accumulate. That's for termites, by the mm-hmm. way. Clutter prevents p- places for pests to breed and hide and makes it hard to get rid of them. So get rid of clutter. Close off places where pests can enter and hide. So caught cracks in your houses, um, in your cabinets, in your baseboards, etc. 
learn about the pests you have and the options to control them, and check pest uh, for pests in packages or boxes before carrying them into your home. So that's like their like so you don't ever have to use pesticide yeah but then like they say what if you have to use pesticide Mm -hmm. here's what they say keep pets and children away from areas where pesticide has been applied after the preventative steps have been taken you can use baits as the first line of chemical defense against insects or rodents they're effective and can be used with low risk of exposure as long as they're kept out of the reach of children and pets so don't let your toddlers eat the roach bait yeah no no um other relatively low risk pesticides are available for some pests just like spider spray or bug spray that Mm -hmm. type of stuff pesticides not contained in baits or traps should generally only be applied at targeted locations not sprayed over a whole room use the fogging device only when necessary that's when you bomb your house okay always read and follow the pest label instructions and safety warnings Use ready-to-use products, which do not require mixing. So the EPA says if the product requires mixing, you should probably hire a pest control company. Yeah. Because when you have a product that requires mixing, you have a level of exposure and contamination. Yeah. Um, and you might not even do it, do it right, actually. Yeah, yeah. Only apply chemicals approved for use in homes. And um, it should have an EPA label on it that yeah. says it's safe. If you do have a pest control operator, they should be able to provide information about the chemical, such as the material safety data sheet. They say, make sure to expose, dis- excuse me, ex- dispose of any leftover pesticides containers properly. Don't use outdoor chemicals in your house. Don't assume that twice is better. So only apply based on the directions. Don't apply pesticide twice, because if you t- apply it twice, then you could actually poison your family. More is not better you guys less is more in this case yeah less is more don't transfer pesticides to other containers and don't do your own mixture (laughs) that should be common sense yeah (laughs) so i liked i liked that brochure i like it less after your section but i liked that brochure (laughs) um when it comes to the modern home at least here in texas we have something called the the texas department of agriculture yes and they're the ones that release the pesticide license for the treatment Mm -hmm. and the investigation of pest control so if you listen to our wdi is that season one or season two Season one. Season one. If you listen to our WDI, you know that our all of our inspectors are actually pest control certified. Yes. As long as as well as home inspectors, and so what that means is they can actually look for and treat termites. Although we do not treat. No, we just look for them. Exactly. And the reason we don't treat is because storing and handling chemicals is a paperwork nightmare. Yeah, exactly. And I'm pretty sure we do not want to deal with that. We don't (laughs) want to deal with that. So not only do you have to follow EPA regulations, but because we live in Texas, you have to follow the Texas Department of Agriculture regulations as well. You also have training and other all sorts of monstrous stuff you can do. Having said that, I have seen a lot of pest control companies not follow any of the rules touch the pesticides with their bare hands, mix the pesticides by putting their arms up to their elbow and mixing them. That is insane. Yes. So, and what happens basically is if you report stuff to the TDA, they just find people. They don't put people out of business. So my advice to you is do your research and see if your state has a regulatory commission for pesticides, which I'm pretty sure all 50 states do because pesticides are so toxic. Yeah, I mean, they have to. They have to. Now, when it comes to pest treatment, you might, when you move into a new home, you're like, well, what if this house is full of poison? The good news is that pesticide doesn't stick around for that long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like like I said earlier, some of them stay in the environment for longer than other ones. So it really just depends on the type. Yeah. If you're in South Texas, what we're mainly using is termite and roach control, those giant roaches nasty little the flying ones yeah the flying roaches not german roaches which are the roaches you have if your house is dirty yeah those, those are little baby ones yes the massive monster size of your palm will fly under your hair roaches those are terrifying i will run <laughs> i think they're called pimento i think that's a slang though i don't know what they're actually called yeah. tree roaches is what i think they're actually called anyway they're they're a nightmare and i didn't know they existed until i moved to texas and if i had known they existed i never would have moved to texas are there really none of those up north no Oh my God. Lucky. <laughs> you know, the first time I opened my shower curtain and like five of those flew out in my apartment, I was like, I want to go home right now. Oh I am done God. with this place. May it burn to the ground. That's terrifying. You know, one time we had one of those roaches, me and my, when I had a roommate, 
we had one of those roaches and we're both terrified of bugs we started screaming we grabbed the broom we were trying we had the door open we were trying to sweep it out our neighbors came outside they were like are you guys okay (laughs) (laughs) we were like there's a there's a roach in there (laughs) they're nasty and if you if you've never seen one we'll post a picture yeah we could put it in the blog yeah they're huge it's huge anyway what i'm trying to say is If you're worried about moving into a new home that it could be covered in pesticides, typically the pest control um, for house is reapplied quarterly. And it does get washed away with rain as well. Mm -hmm. So um, the big thing with the quarterly pest application is uh, if you hire Terminex or whatever pest control company to come out and spray your yard quarterly, um, just don't let your kids roll in the grass or like eat the dirt. Yeah, or your dog. Yeah, it's a very low chance of actually getting contaminated from these household pest yeah but uh, I, better to be safe than sorry yes <laughs> if they spray inside your house you need to leave the house for an hour yeah um to let it sit and that take your dog with you or put them in a kennel and cover them up mm-hmm. um if they have to bomb your house then you have to leave the house completely yeah, sure. um it's like breaking bad did you ever watch breaking bad where they like would I make the meth bad. in I the love, house yeah. and they would tent and they it put the the yellow tent over yeah it. and yeah. then they would hit the pesticides to get rid of the meth mm-hmm. smell um so if you have to tent the house that means you have to leave and yeah. there are rules you have to follow um that's obviously for only very very serious conditions. yeah it has to be something probably insane i wouldn't even know in the state of Texas, is that if the house has had any pest control at all, even preventative, the seller has to disclose it in the seller's disclosure. Yes, yes. So again, check your state, but that's for the state of Texas. That's the rules is anything, even preventative treatment has to be disclosed in the seller's disclosure. That's good though. I'm glad that they do that. Yeah, yeah. Really, um, I want to say pest control treatment in your home shouldn't be your main worry. Yeah, no, no, no. Your main worry should be the pest control treatment that's going on in your city or your state. Also, what type of food you're eating. Yeah, I I feel like if it's like when it comes to your home, you're more in control of that. You live there, you know, so you can be more safe about it. Well, they're also using because it's in a home, they're using much less toxic well yeah, then yeah. again we don't know because they don't yeah have we to, don't fully know but i'm hy- hypothetically <laughs> um there was a, a saying that like when we went to pest control training this was years ago when we first did it that you could actually drink a jug of pesticides and the worst thing that would happen to you is vomiting like that's how low of a toxicity uh, it is at least for the ones in your house yes okay but that's for an adult though if your oh, kid yeah. drinks pesticide like immediately yeah and don't induce vomiting don't try it don't try it (laughs) yeah call poison control um but yeah they're saying that it's such a low level of toxicity that you could ingest it and it wouldn't kill you yeah but again don't try that at home Mm -hmm. um really though as i said it's it's large environmental pesticides that we should be more concerned about as far as causing those things that you yeah talked about (laughs) i'm sure those things are like on a much larger scale yeah and especially in the 60s um when they're using ddt on everything or in this 50s and 60s um the problems were a lot different yeah so now the other question i always get is can your home inspector tell if the house has had pesticides and the answer is no uh home inspection in most states including the state of texas is just a visual inspection yeah so they're not really doing any type of chemical testing in the house where that would really come into play is through the seller's disclosure yeah yeah. and um if you have a pest control inspection as well they'll be able to see if they put in preventative rods yeah yeah, because there are some things that you can't see but yeah there are prevent well especially in south texas there are rods that we put in our yeah especially for the termites and we talk about that i think too in the in the wi yeah yeah, the termite rods so yeah i mean now i'm all freaked out a little bit i think we'll be okay i hope Um, we'll be okay (laughs) i think we'll be okay i think we'll be okay in our house is what i was trying to say yeah i think so too I think so. I feel safe in my house. I will never go outside again, but I feel safer in my house. But you know what? It's fine if we never go outside again because, you know, COVID. Yeah, there's a lot of dangerous stuff out there. (laughs) (laughs) So do you think it's time for credits? Yes, it's time for credits. 
Don't be scared, you guys. Yeah, take a deep breath. You'll be okay as long as you're taking care of yourself. And you know, you're in control of your home, at least for the most part, so. Wear your gas mask and your hazmat suit when you go outside. Always wash your hands when you come back inside. Yeah. And Always wash your fruit. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, that's a good one. Always wash your fruit. Yes, but you'll be okay. Yeah, you'll be okay. And if there's any spraying happening, just don't touch that area. Yeah, just get your, your kids, your animals out of the house. And don't leave them and yeah. go to Cancun. Yeah, just be safe about it. You really just gotta be safe. Take all the pre precautions. I know precautions sometimes are you're like, I don't wanna do all of that, but it's for your health and for the health of your family. So it's important. Yes, yes. it's very important. On that note, our music credit is Kevin McLeod of Incomptech. Our source credit is pitchcare.com, epa.gov, and an academic article called Pesticide Usage in the United States History, Benefits, Risk, and Trends by Dr. Keith De La Plaine. Ooh. No. Check us out on YouTube at A Action Home Inspection Group Houston, on Facebook and on Instagram at Home Inspector underscore Texas, and on TikTok uh, at home, Houston Home Inspector. Yes. And our next topic is, this is a big one, asbestos. Oh, okay. I'm excited. I'm excited. I know. I know. So this is, is a big one. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited I feel these research. are all doom and gloom, but they are. They're, they're fascinating. They're very fascinating. Um, it's it's definitely morbid, but yes. it's very fascinating. It's good to know. It's good to know because I never knew about any of this stuff, and now I'm like, okay, now I'm aware at least. Yeah. Now you're afraid of everything, just like me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but at least we're not alone. <laughs> That's true. That's true. And on that note, I'm Mary, and I'm Easy, and we're the Home Girls, and we'll talk to you next time. Yes. <laughs>